up, and I, I'm a cradle Anglican, um, you, everybody went to church on Sunday morning. It was just part of what you did as a community. So your social life and was often around the, the church in terms of friends were met at church and so on. The world around us has shifted tremendously, and the place of the church in society has shifted. And we've had to come to terms with that. We're going this way, right? My name is Matthew Carter, and I am an Anglican. I also live in a world where, day by day, such a statement can be met with a growing sense of apathy. Times are a-changing, and one could easily make the argument that, not unlike other institutions, the church is more than a step behind. The social shift around us, around people's understanding of the church, alongside of scandal and everything else, alongside of institutional mistrust that is bigger than the church, it's institutional mistrust across all institutions in society, um, has meant that many people are simply indifferent to the church or negative. And so just doing what we do better doesn't meet uh, the kind of transformational change that we need to be doing. And so we have to ask, how are we going to speak about what we know the gospel is about in a voice and a language, both liturgically and pastorally and in just daily conversation, that will awaken people to the possibility that the God of all creation cares for them and is calling them into discipleship. Awakening others to the call of discipleship. Strong, noble words. Yet within the context of a society in perpetual transition, what does that mean? And what does that look like? For answers, I went to see Jenny Anderson, who let me know about a new supporting initiative the Diocese of Toronto is undertaking. So REACH grants came into being because we wanted to water the grass roots, the little grass shoots that are springing up all over the diocese. And the purpose of the REACH grants is to help congregations reach people they've never reached before. Uh, unchurched people who have no experience of church or de people who used to be connected to church but, but are no longer. And so a REACH grant is to serve as a one-time grant of $500 to $5,000 to help congregations reach new people. When change is required, it is always wisest to start at the foundation, at the grassroots level. I began to seek out these little grass shoots in order to get a sense of what kinds of initiatives were attracting not only the REACH grant program, but also unchurched and de-churched children of God throughout the greater Toronto area. St. George of the Mitre was built in 1844, um, and it's just an amazing space. It's really conducive to ministry. And so we thought to ourselves, well, how can we best utilize the sort of connections that we have here, the sense of history and the space that we have. But we realized fairly soon that there was the demographic shift that was happening in this community that would actually facilitate in some level a new community forming here. As part of a project last year with school, uh, Jeff and I got attached with St. George the Martyr and so what we were exploring was what we could do with the night community in Toronto because it's an opportunity where the church isn't open at night, you know, we're supposed to be the light to the world and all that but we shut down. And so we explored the region, we explored Queen Street where St. George the Martyr is kind of looking for a way to connect with the community. We did a lot of uh, questioning people, we interviewed people on the street to figure out what we could do. And then God really pointed us in the direction of the Music Gallery, which is a cooperative group which uh, uses the space at the church to put on shows. And so what we've done uh, over the last few months uh, of this year, we uh, explored a way to be hospitable to them and to connect with them in, a, in an authentic Christian way. And so what we thought uh, was that what's the most authentic way that we can connect with a secular group, and that's food. So what we decided is we would offer meals to them after their events and then just get to know them and hope that we could develop uh, a Christian identity, uh, we could have conversations of faith, we could bring up the name of Jesus and see where that took us. The last time that we had an event here, it was uh, really a situation of loaves and fishes. We had over 50 people uh, uh, come over from the event that was happening in the music gallery over to the rectory. And we had enough food for everyone and we even had some left over. And so in the, in the moment, we're just kind of in the experimental phase where we've had five meetings and it's been great. The attendance has been uh, 20 or more. And uh, so we hope uh, in the fall uh, to uh, kick it off again because they shut down over the summer and to really ramp up uh, how we 
bring Christ into it. And so how we uh, name Christ, how we are following Christ's example by welcoming people to the table. And so, you know, we just, uh, we're praying that we can uh, continue to discern the Holy Spirit's actions with them. And, uh, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. Cameron House is a shelter for homeless women located in Peterborough. We are working with women who would never attend a traditional church. They just don't feel that the people would accept them, and worse than that, they don't feel that God would accept them. We first of all started with a beginning Bible group, uh, which sort of taught everybody what Christianity is. And to begin with, it was just a couple of women. But uh, to my surprise, the next week there were six, and then the next week after that there were 12. I started going to the spiritual meetings with some of the other girls on Wednesday evenings with Kathy Stone. And I started to find that it was making me feel better and learning more about who I was as a person. We are working with women who are victims of abuse as well as many other addictions, primarily alcohol and drug. And we are doing what we call the group there. And the group is a 12-step group to teach them not only about how to give their problems over to God instead of trying to work on their willpower, but we're also hoping that uh, that they will be rejuvenated by the fact that, that God does love them. I want to go to school now. These are things that I never would have thought about doing before, but I know that these are things I can do. And I believe that that's God helping me believe that I am, that it's not too late. There's a paradox about Christianity. The more we give over to God, the stronger we become. We're hoping that through giving this awareness about God and spirituality and enriching their souls, that things can change in their whole life. Today is Pitch Day. Applicants from all across the diocese come and state their case as to why their projects and initiatives will flourish, grow, and minister under the support of the diocese. One by one they arrive, exuding confidence, dedication, and zeal. During the brief downtimes, I was able to chat with some of the applicants as well as the judges. I think an analogy to me is like any, any large corporation knows what its core business is, but without a really strong research and development department or program, without R&D, um, they cannot possibly meet the, the demands of the present, let alone the future. I think the REACH grant process is a small, very small R&D department for the Diocese of Toronto. And we're also trying to understand that it's not only about creativity, mm -hmm. that we do have phenomenally creative people, but yeah. it is about an extension of gospel ministry yes. and Christ-centered communities, and how do we do that? So, faith formation. And faith formation, which has been an operative question that we constantly ask, how will faith uh, be formed? How will disciples be equipped and made out of this process? So uh, yeah, it's, it's that tension, and we're learning on the go, too. I mean, just like a lot of the presenters are learning, so too, we're trying to sort that out. It's not cut and dry. The minute a, a green shoot of life and growth a sprouts in a congregation, the REACH grant wants to be there to, to pour some money on it to, to help that grow as the congregation begins to then take full ownership uh, for the, the hopefully new ministry. It's amazingly important to provide seed money to projects such as we've been hearing about which have no other options where there's no other real source of funding for them. For us to be able to make a decision on the spot and get money to them quickly so that they can react to needs in their community. Tremendously important and very different from what the Anglican Church has done in the past. So yeah, very important. The judges come to a consensus before the day is out. And within days, grant money is being sent in support of the most promising initiatives. The process is quick, efficient, and sophisticated in its minimalist approach. I subsequently sought out grant receivers to get an update as to how their respective REACH grant has helped in their ministries. Um, and here at St. Brides, we're really trying to focus on our neighbours more, to think more about them. So in getting ready for Back to Church Sunday, we decided we wanted to host some lead-up events called Church on the Grass, which we're doing for four weeks at the end of summer, sort of getting people thinking about coming back to church, um, inviting people to church. Um, in preparation for Church on the Grass, we went around to our neighbours and invited them to come with us. We gave them a personal invitation, um, but mostly it was just to have a conversation with them, to introduce ourselves, and to let them know that we're here, and uh, some of the things that 
we're here for, uh, which is to care for them. It's just an outdoor worship experience. We do a little bit of singing. Somebody shares a testimony. It's really relaxed, low-key, very different from anything else we do at St. Bride's. It's a chance to be visible to our community. We have an amazing church property uh, outside of our building that we never get to use really enough. And um, we share food, we share fellowship, we're sharing time with each other and just trying to be more hospitable. Well, the testimonies are important because you're not a professional. You're just one of the congregation. You reach out with your story and the way Jesus Christ is, is, and what he's meant to you and how you came to Jesus Christ and the importance of calling on the name of Jesus to be saved. And that's really the key. Church on the Grass is an outreach. It's, it's meant to bring people in. And I've had the guests here with me last week and they loved it because it's informal, it's comfortable, it's very family oriented in that we are one body in Christ. Uh, so it's really something uh, that every denomination can come and, and be welcomed and just enjoy the service. I think an important learning edge for us here at St. Brides is really just learning to take risks again as a church. Uh, it's really easy to get kind of in the same routines and we, um, through trying to think about what it means to be a missional church, what it means to be Jesus' disciples, are trying to practice taking risks. Um, not just inviting somebody to something once, but getting in the habit of extending an invitation on a regular basis. And so I think that's something that we're really learning about right now. And that's some of what the REACH grants have facilitated us to do, is just be able to practice these things more uh, and, and take a bit of a risk. This is Pandemania St. Paul's day camp, messy camp. As the campers arrive, they go downstairs and they, we have a, a coloring that they do just to wait for everyone to arrive. Uh, and then we have an opening and we have our, uh, our song, God is Wild About You. And uh, they seem to be really excited about that song and really have gotten to know the song. And I think they've uh, caught on to what the idea is about, that God is definitely wild about them. And we have three different groups and they split off into either craft, uh, game, or there's a, a movie uh, that they also are, are able to see that's also related uh, to the Pandemonium Day Camp. So they do that for two sessions, and then they all gather together for a snack. And the snacks have been around the theme of whatever that day was. And then we gather together for the final closing, where we do song, we do a talking about the theme again, and, uh, and then they s sit and have some quiet before their parents come and pick them up. We weren't sure if we we're gonna get any campers, so we were quite nervous, um, but we, we prayed and we had a maximum of 30 uh, that we wanted to take in and we got 27 campers, so we we're very thankful. The REACH grant has been fantastic. We have been able to do some advertising, which we wouldn't have been able to do if we hadn't had the REACH grant, and certainly to be reaching out to this many children only a few of whom are from our church. Only about four of these children out of the 27 are actually from this church. And so um, we're reaching, we are reaching. So that's fantastic. Well, I have two children here. One is three and one is five. We live in the community. And this is our first time here and it's been a lovely experience. The people here are very warm and friendly and kind and it introduces us to the church which is important too. I read it in the local newspaper and it was affordable and it was reasonable for both my children so I said let's try it out. And I think it's a great mix of teaching my children religion and about church and everything and a lot of fun. They've learned a lot and they they come home every night and sing the songs to my husband and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Part of the reason why we've done this is because we want to be a seen as a church that is reaching out and cares for children because we do care for children. Newmarket is a growing community. It is, uh, I think, needing more um, of a witness. So our church is trying to get out there more, um, but we also want people to come in to be a part of our community. So it's a twofold thing. And uh, yesterday, one of the parents said, I'm, I'm gonna come on Friday, but also, um, my child hasn't been baptized. Could I come to this church and have my child baptized? And also, uh, we'd like to renew our vows. Would this be a church that we could come to to have our vows renewed? So this is one family. I don't, there may be others, uh, but just to have them come into the church, uh, I think it'd be wonderful. 
it's a renewed sense of vitality, of what is possible. I've gotten this great sense of energy and hope. I think a lot of people are, they're trying things out, they're not afraid to uh, step forward, try something new, try something different. They're like, okay, we're going to see how this goes, we're going to step forward in good faith and uh, really try to reach the people outside of the church building. I love being a bishop at this time because it is so scary. <laughs> it's a time of tremendous change and opportunity, and it's also a time when God is really pushing us hard. And there will be chances to try things that we haven't tried before. There will be chances to do things we haven't done before. There will be failure, yes. But there will also be opportunities to see things emerge, grow, take off, in ways that none of us could have expected. These are congregations who have a desire to reach new people with the gospel and with Christ-centered community, and they see the new people in their neighborhoods that they've never reached before. And they're also willing to take some risks to experiment and try some new things, go out on a limb. Some will work, some won't. But these congregations are willing to, to give it a try, and they have a sense that God's calling them to try some new things and to see uh, which of those, it's like scattering seeds. Some will fall on rocky ground, some will fall on fertile ground. And the REACH grants want to be there to water them and we'll see which ones grow. I love the doxology at the end of the Eucharist. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. More than we can imagine. And so our tiny steps into taking some risks and our tiny steps are being faithful to God and trusting that that more than we can ask or imagine is going to emerge out of that.